take you in, hallelujah. We're gonna take you in to a recording that we did on yesterday's men's encounter. There was some awesome men of God that was there and we was doing some teaching on the kingdom from a different perspective. Now the first few minutes might be missing, but you're gonna join us at, in, in progress. You're gonna be able to hear the, um, hear the recording that my wife had did of the segment. We had a very powerful time. The atmosphere was set for something supernatural. That's how we operate, <laughs> hallelujah. And the people of God there were hungry for the move of God. And make no mistake about it, God is preparing his people for a time and a season that's upon us right now. And we need to be ready. So what we did, we operated in the realm of the spirit. We we just simply let the Lord have his way. This is what it did. The Lord told me to just flow with him and he will manifest himself. I'm paraphrasing, but that but that's but that oh my God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't know we had and my wife had actually recorded it. So like I said, that's a plus. So we're gonna put it, we're gonna give it to you. And we're getting ready to transition in a few minutes. So we pray that this will be a blessing to you. We pray God's blessing over this segment and, and even the time I'm spending with you right now. I pray that God will give you a spirit of illumination and revelation for what you're about to hear. We'll be joining it right now. So how do we go into this new dimension? Take the limitations off. Do not judge what God is going to do based upon your point of reference, which is past. Because God is always, somebody say, doing a new thing. And that's not a cliche. So anybody that gets up here and teach and preach, you're going to teach and preach based upon your point of reference. Your intimacy with God, and make no mistake about it, those of you that pray, you don't have to. You don't have to tell people that you pray. They'll tell by what you do. Oh, yeah. They will tell by what happens in your life because God will confirm His word through you. So, you put time in. God's job is to prove you. Now, based upon what we, what the man of God said earlier, Parker. My life is complicated because people will ask me, well, what you gonna preach or teach? I may be standing on something and then stuff will start coming as I'm sitting there. If anybody's watching me, I'm gonna write down nothing because this is, this is how I've learned how to operate. I may do a whole bunch of study, but then a whole bunch of it won't come till I'm ready to get up and say stuff. Somebody said revelation. But when you do this as a lifestyle, somebody say lifestyle. Revelation can come at any time. That's why you don't have to be pulling your hair wondering what you're going to teach or preach when you understand how revelation works. When you do this as a lifestyle and not just to teach and preach, it can come at any given time. I trust the Holy Ghost that by the time I get up here, I'm going to have what I need to say. Oh, I feel God's your presence in here right now. Hallelujah. Now, dealing with the storms, real quick, where we live between Franklin and Homer, we live in Patterson, we've seen they go to the left or they go to the right or they dissipate. Now, people say, well, we know that by revelation. Matter of fact, when storms come, we have an we God gives us a posture of how we're supposed to act when these storms come. Whether it's to rebuke them or to hunker down. Listen, God doesn't reveal anything unless he reveals it to his servants and prophets, right? We have to believe that. So when stuff happens, you have the ability to have somebody say inside information. Now, based upon revelation. We don't wait till the storm is upon us. We start praying in advance. And, he, and now hurricane season is going to be coming up here in, in a little bit. <laughs> so you need to be setting the atmosphere where you live. Because if not witches and warlocks and everybody else, they're setting an atmosphere. Does everybody understand that? God has given us authority. Somebody 
Somebody say authority. And you need to speak some things. I don't care how ridiculous it sounds. If it's in this Bible, it's fair game. Now it may be true that some people misquote and misinterpret the word, but we're, we, we're persuading a better thing for everybody in here right now. Because you're here as leaders and examples. Hallelujah. Because we have some people that we was mentoring, right? They took it upon themselves to go to Mississippi until they found out that we wasn't going anywhere. They waste their way to some money in the hotel and everything else like that. Then the next door came, they wanted to see what our posture was before they moved. It's important to understand that God wants to give you inside information. You don't want to be on the outside of what God is doing in the midst of everything. Anything that happens in this three-dimensional world, God has the ability to tell you how, to, how your posture should be. That's based upon what? Intimacy and revelation. Intimacy with God and revelation will give you your posture. You don't want your posture to be based upon what everybody else is doing without first checking with the Holy Ghost. Oh my God. So we're talking about the kingdom from a different perspective. <laughs> Today. Now we're, in a, now we're in a situation right now, it's writing those down. God's preparing the saints for battle. He's preparing them for direct confrontation with the powers of darkness. In order for you to be able to operate and navigate, you have to, you have to be able to have an intimacy with God that goes beyond the norm. This is not about religion anymore. This is not about church as usual. This is not about tradition. This is about getting you ready for direct confrontation with people who want to do you bodily harm and everything along those lines. You've got the power. Somebody's got the power. Now you need to know that by, not by cliche. You need to know that by revelation. So when you confront the powers of darkness, you already know who you represent. Somebody said the kingdom. The kingdom of God and all the resources that come out of the kingdom is at your disposal. That includes his divine protection. You have to believe that you will be here long enough to do your assignment. You do not want to leave here prematurely saying that God gets the glory out of it. The devil is alive. You don't want to be here any longer than you're supposed to be. I get that. But how are we going to manifest the kingdom unless we stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the adversary? Since we say we've got power, since we say we've got the Holy Ghost, the angel, we got all of that at our disposal. Why should the powers of darkness triumph over the believer? And we're the examples that we're supposed to be teaching other people how to walk, right? Now, I catch a lot of flack. I'm okay with that. I sleep good with it. Because that just goes with the territory. Now, when God is giving you an assignment, that comes with the territory. So when God gives you a sign, we're going to tie this together to a couple scriptures that I got. We haven't got to yet, but we're going to get there. Hallelujah. But when God gives you a sign, he also gives you the ability to deal with the persecution that comes with it. Does everybody understand that? He gives you the grace to do the assignment. Knowing persecution is going to come with it, he gives you the ability. So don't cry about the persecution. That goes with the territory. You've got the grace to deal with it. You need to know that. There's two times you go through problems. One, when you're out of the will of God. And two, when you're in the will of God. <laughs> so, it makes no difference, right? You just want to make sure that you're not going through stuff out of the will of God. When it's out of the will of God, you got to get back into alignment. But if it's in the will of God, you are. Somebody say, I got the victory. Oh, my Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Karama, I said it. Now, all of you are strategically where God has put you to affect change. So where you are right now, your physical location, 
You want to set the atmosphere and trust God. Because if you don't speak something, something's always being spoken in the region that you're in. Does everybody understand that? You've got greater authority. Somebody say greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now, based upon that revelation, you've got to let what's on the inside of you come out. You've got to speak it. You've got to live it. We believe in manifestation. We don't believe in just preaching and teaching, and there is no demonstration. This is not just on a setting here on a Saturday. My wife is back there. She'll tell you that every time we go out somewhere, there's always an opportunity for something to break out. That's true. <laughs> we do this as a lifestyle. Amen. Does everybody understand that? Because it's okay to bring people to a building. And that's cool. But sooner or later, the building has got to go out there. The ecclesia, the church of Jesus Christ, is portable. And we take the ecclesia everywhere we go. And you're a walking revival. Somebody say, I'm a walking revival. I, I, let me rephrase that. I'm a walking encounter. Encounter. I believe in the encounters more so than revivals. In order to revive something, that it has to have been dead. <coughs> so even with the, the, the videos that we do, we call it prophetic encounter. Because I don't believe that, that, that the, the term conferences and stuff like that. Nah. Encounter. We want something life-changing to take place. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, starting at the very first verse. Oh, I feel the presence of God in here right now. We're activating something in you leaders today. We want the fire of the Holy Ghost to consume you. We want your intimacy to come to a different place, a different dimension. And it's okay that everybody around you don't get it. Remember, salvation is a personal thing. You cannot make anybody do anything that's not in their heart to do. The most you can do is be an example of that and allow the Holy Ghost to do his job, to bring conviction. But he can't do his unless he uses a catalyst, right? You're the catalyst. So if you have to deal with some backlash, it's okay. Because if everybody embraces you, somebody say, Houston, we got a problem. If everybody likes you, that means you need to get back in your prayer closet. Because if the wrong people are embracing you, you got a problem. It's okay for you to make false prophets, hypocrites, and those that don't want to do right, make them uncomfortable. Because too many people preach a politically correct gospel. Now the gospel that God wants to raise up is one that's, that's built for confrontation. Because we don't have to be afraid of the devil when we've got all, all the resources of the kingdom behind us. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1, starting at verse number 1. Watch this, y'all. It says, the former trustees have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus both began, began both to do and to teach. Somebody do? Somebody say do? do. And teach. And teach. So he did two things. He, he, he taught, but he did. So we got to be a combination of both. Until the day in which he was taken up after that, he, through the Holy Ghost, so Jesus is still working through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to what? The kingdom of God. Now he talked about the kingdom more than he even talked about the church. Come on. Now, forty days of talking about the things of the kingdom, how much of that that we know is recorded of what he said in those forty days? So that's a, so he his focus was on the kingdom, right? Amen. And I think that's important because many people are more concerned about what's happening in the natural 
rather than understanding that God is bringing forth a supernatural kingdom here in the earth. And we are facilitators of that kingdom. Oh my Jesus. We are facilitators of the kingdom of God. Why is this important? Because mindset has everything to do with how you operate. When you know you have the backing of heaven, your mindset when you face things is totally different when you compared to when you feel like you're out there by yourself. When you're an ambassador of Christ, when you are a representative, heaven stands behind what you say. Now it's key for you to be able to operate within the framework of what God is telling you. Because remember, when we deal with the kingdom, who's our king? Jesus, right? Amen. We want to listen to what the commander-in-chief has to tell us. And in the process of doing that, there cannot be any failure when you're hearing the voice of God. This is why people need to learn how to hear the voice of God. You've got to be able to hear what the Spirit is saying so you can operate. Don't do a lot of hit and miss doing a lot of things thinking that it's God and you don't know. Every leader in here has the ability to be able to know the voice of God and operate within the strength of that voice because when you hear the voice of God, it activates supernatural authority. Does everybody understand that? Supernatural power. Oh my Jesus. It activates the supernatural. That's why the enemy does not want you to hear a voice of God. Hallelujah. Number four, verse four, it says, now I'm going to tie this together. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. That's what you call divine instruction. He told them specifically, do not go anywhere. Until, I mean, do not put depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized. Somebody say baptized. Baptized. You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, Jesus, you got to think about this. When Jesus answers a question or a statement, there's always a reason why Jesus answers the way he does to something that is said or asked. Now we're going to tie this together. All right. Verse 6. It says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Now, the disciples, after 40 days of hearing them talking about the kingdom of God, they're still more concerned about an earthly kingdom. That sounds familiar. We're more concerned about what's happening in the local government, not realizing that God wants to use this as an opportunity to manifest his kingdom. We see the failure in government, but there's a government that will not fail. Then, oh my God. Oh my God. Hallelujah. This is an opportunity for, for the true and living kingdom to be manifested through everybody who will point yourself and say, I'm a facilitator of that. I'm a facilitator of that. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus answers the question based upon his point of reference to what he sees. Watch this. He said, it's not for you to know the times, because he's answering the, he's answering the question this way. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father put in his own power or authority, but you shall receive power after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost parts of the earth. In other words, he answered them based upon the need of the kingdom. Somebody say power. They're more concerned about an earthly kingdom. He's redirecting their focus to Jerusalem where they can be endowed with power so they can go. Not to establish an earthly kingdom, but a spiritual kingdom, which is what you're part of. When you became born again, you was you was part. Of, you, when you became born again, you became part of a kingdom. You may be citizens of the United States, you may be residents of the state of Louisiana, but you're citizens of a different kingdom. Mindset is very important. 
How do you view yourself? Do you, do you feel like you're just out there? Or do you feel like you're part of a greater army? The army of heaven. Hallelujah. And you're going to operate based upon the level of revelation that you understand this thing. So when we deal with sickness and disease, we have the promises. Now with this government, it's got a good health plan. Healing is the children's bread. Amen. <laughs> Very powerful. Yes, it is. And you need to know that. We got good law enforcement. Very powerful law enforcement. Hallelujah. You need to know that. This takes our relationship from just church as usual to an extension of a very powerful kingdom here on the earth. We implement the plan of God, hallelujah, by what we do and what we speak. Oh, my Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Many times we pray with people, we ain't, we ain't got to spend a whole bunch of time praying. We speak the word. Amen. And nowadays with COVID-19, nobody wants you to touch them anyway. <laughs> so we see a lot of things happen just by speaking the word. Not in days, not sometimes in days, but sometimes a whole bunch of time matter of minutes. Oh my God. This time we pray with people, we walk away, we don't see them for weeks, we come back to you. Because it's not our job to do the healing, it's God's job. Amen. This is the thing. His word in our mouth. In our mouth. Yes. Speaking. Yes. God's giving you the authority to speak that word. But you gotta do it based upon the understanding that this, that this is what it is. We do this as a lifestyle. Now I'm not an advocate of talking about something that I don't demonstrate. Because my wife tells me all the time, she said, you talk all that noise, you better make sure. <laughs> you better make sure that, that, that you don't get caught, caught out like that. I ain't sure. <laughs> She'll tell me in a minute. And, and it's good to put yourself out there. I'm going to tell you why. Because you need to challenge yourself to be everything you want. You need to do that. If you're not there now, the most beautiful thing about this is, somebody said transformation. You can start from today. Hallelujah. We're part of a supernatural king, the kingdom of God from a different perspective. Now, every moment that you're not dealing with actual confrontation is the time for you to prepare for battle. God in his wisdom right now is getting everybody ready for a time and a place and a season that what we're talking about is going to become irrelevant because we've been talking about this stuff since 2013. Nobody would have thought things would have changed the way they have been changing. But you always have inside information. So, when God told me at the beginning of last year that he's going to require a greater level of intimacy from all of his ministers. That's exactly what he said. Why is that? Because it's necessary now. Do not let fear overtake you. Because the answer to that, somebody say intimacy. Intimacy is going to be the key. Right. Amen. I feel that in my spirit right now. Intimacy is going to be the key. He's making a separation between the real and the false. He's already bringing a shake into the seeker from the church. The ones that tell you what you want to hear, but there is no transformation. The devil is alive. This is not about trying to build a church membership. It's about building disciples who walk in the power. I'm trying to keep from running here. To walk in the power and the presence of God. My God. You don't want the devil to come in your church and start shooting people up. Attacking them with COVID-19, the devil is alive. That's right. You've got the power of the Holy Ghost. You've got the presence of God. Oh, my Jesus. And God wants to light a fire under his people. How I'm trying to 
trying to be calm here. Oh, come on, Baba Sunday, love Baba Sunday. We bring, oh my God, we bring the presence of God everywhere we go. Does everybody understand that? Do you understand how precious that is? How powerful the presence of God is? It obliterates everything in his path. You need to know that. You operate based upon the revelation of this. And when you operate based upon that, there's no stopping you. You was built for confrontation. Oh my Jesus. Now in all fairness to my wife, I say a lot of stuff. Because when I was much younger, I had to deal with a lot of confrontation because of my sons. But I'm gonna tell you something. You need to, you need to, you need to get, get your adrenaline up for confrontation. Don't run from it. Just make sure that you have the power and the presence of God back in you when you go somewhere. Now you understand that by theory. Now when Jesus told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem, there were powers what we call dunamis. Somebody say dynamite. Dynamite. That's the root word they use for dynamite. And that, now this, now think about this. That's just at the beginning of this spiritual walk. After three and a half years, the Holy Ghost is, 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 is the basis. Even the gospel itself, the power of God and the salvation, that same word is what we call dunamis. So when we preach the word of God, somebody say dynamite. So the true essence of the word of God is something that just blows stuff up. It changes the dimension of people. Hallelujah. And that's just preaching the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many conquerors do we have in here today? Thank you, Jesus. You may not every you may not get everybody to side with you. You don't need everyone. Not when you know your authority. Many people judge their effectiveness by how many people embrace them. The Bible says the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God because the foolishness did, right? So you can so we're gonna tie this to the next scripture that we're gonna get. You need to understand that if you can't get everybody to embrace you, you got enough power inside of you to get something started. Now somebody keep track of my 45 minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hi. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're going to try to do this right. But one of the things we've learned, when the Holy Ghost goes sit down, we go sit down. In other words, when the anointing lifts, we, we shut it down. If the Holy Ghost goes somewhere and sits down, then you're still up here on your own. And there is no guarantees when it's like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're almost there. Now, remember what I said earlier, that Jesus will answer a question or a statement based upon his point of reference. Because most people, when they was asking Jesus stuff, it was based upon their point of reference, which was jacked up. They would ask questions or say things based upon their limited point of reference. So let's go to so St. John chapter 3. God wants to change your point of reference to his point of reference. His point of reference. John chapter 3 starting at verse number 1. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Thank you, Jesus. That means All right. do more than it just says, say there was song. a man of the Pharisee. But change your mindset. In other words, change the, the mindset Jews. of the way you think and to a kingdom of Jesus. Jesus by night and said, That's man, powerful, that y'all. Watch this. Oh, my God. We know that. You need to look at obstacles as opportunity for the kingdom of God. 
God to be glorified. So we don't have to cry about problems anymore. When we know the kingdom has got our back. All things are, oh my God. All things are working together for our good. Oh my God. Oh my God.
Hallelujah. Now, every one of you here right now, as believers, you carry the presence of God. Think about that for a minute. I want you to take some time and just chew on that for a minute. You carry the presence of God. You carry all of heaven on the inside of you right now. Just think about that. So when you're dealing with all the negativity, remember, one of the benefits of the New Testament believer is now God can live on the inside of you. Think about that for a minute. God lives on the inside of you. Now I say this quite often. If you have a husband, wife, you have kids, you have family, and you're in the same house and you have no dialogue. That is what you call dysfunction. But we have a lot of dysfunctional believers who have the presence of God living on the inside of them and they don't have much interaction. Interaction from God is the key for you going into the deep things of God. Because God God doesn't waste time talking. He's always got purpose when he tells you something. Even if it's something that doesn't seem like it's significant to anybody else, because it's about relationship. Relationship always is relevant. So when, when you hear people that say, well, I haven't heard anything from God, you have to graduate to a place where you can hear from God on a continuous basis. Either here, and or feel his presence. That's a win-win situation. I don't want to be going places where, where I can't feel God's presence. I think that's important. Because now remember, in this kingdom, this is not a democracy. A kingdom is where a king rules. So when we deal with the king, we have to understand obedience. But you can't obey what you can't hear. Now, for baby Christians, we always tell them, start with the Logos word. Now, that Logos word will be revelated to you. But you want to come to the place where you can also hear the Spirit of God. There's got to be, there's got to be a marriage between the Word of God, the Logos word, and the Rhema word. The Spirit of God. There's got to be a marriage between the two. We believe in both. We believe that you need to read the Logos to record the Word, but we also need to know that they both work together. Because remember, the Logos Word was inspired by the Spirit. The Spirit is inspired what's in those books. And He can give you the proper interpretation of what He wrote. Hallelujah. I'm going to challenge all of you here, if you have not done so, to get back in your prayer closet and understand what your true assignment is. And be open for the gifts that God wants to give you as far as the ministerial and wise to be able to help facilitate that. And that's important. Because when you operate in that, you're not, you're not just doing just church protocol anymore. You're, operating, you're working for God at that point because you're doing what he's told you to do. Because a lot of people hitting this. A lot of people doing stuff thinking it's God and it's not. You want to know what God is telling you? Walk in the giftings. Now this is the thing. When you deal with confrontation under these certain circumstances, they're no longer fighting against you. They're fighting against the assignment that God gave you, and therefore they're fighting against God. If you're out there doing your own thing, there is no guarantees. You cannot say, that they're fighting against God when you're doing something that God ain't even got his hand on. And you smack out of the will of God. You need to get back in the will of God. Feel the speak this. Now, you cannot afford not to spend time before the Lord to find out what your assignment is. You need to deorganize your schedule so God can organize it. This is in my spirit right now. We can't but not be doing a lot of dead works. You want to be, listen, how many of you 
want to be more effective. It's like a person running in place. You're doing a lot of movement, but you ain't going anywhere. And when you're out of the will of God, you open yourself up for everything that the enemy want to do to you. That's why a lot of people in, quote unquote, in the church, they deal with stuff and it brings a reproach. You want to walk in the presence of God. Does everybody, does everybody want to do that? You want to walk in the power and the presence of God. How many of you want to see some power? Now, a lot of times, sometimes when people, sometimes when we do our videos, sometimes I alienate people because I say they ain't got no power. And I be serious. When I pull them off to the side, I'm actually much nicer. But I'm going to tell you why. Because when you preach the gospel, they expect a certain thing from you. Anybody that preaches the gospel, there's a higher standard for those that preach the gospel. Anybody that goes forth in the gospel and does not at some point operate in signs and wonders, they're misrepresenting the cross. Because Jesus did not send anybody anywhere and not give them the power to heal and deliver. Does everybody understand it? Check your word. Check the word. Now, now if you're in a situation where everybody in the church is healed, bravo. No need for prayer. All right, we get there. But we need to be open. Now, if, if a person is not there right now, we challenge you to get to the place. A lot of things can be fixed with just simply an encounter from God. A divine encounter. All it takes is one encounter from God to change your whole situation. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. So this is not a message of condemnation. This is a message of encouragement because there was a time that I've been in church for years and didn't know God. And I'm being honest with you. I'm being transparent. I opened myself up to a lot of things until God was able to get me to myself. And, and, and birth what he's doing right now. And this was birthed off of tragedy too. The doctors had given up on me in 2011. I had a major heart attack. And Brenda's back there. I was doing a prophetic class. I was an assistant with, 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 with Prophet Charles and we was doing a prophetic life team in Carrollton. And what had happened was is that I was just close to being coming out of here. And honestly, I, was, I didn't want to go out like that. Now, what had happened was is that there was 30 or 40 people that came in the ICU and they prayed for me. Mind you, there might have been other people praying, but they got around my bed and prayed for me. I was sedated at that time. And the doctors did what they could do as far as surgery. God had spoken to him. my mentor, Prophet Charleston said that God was gonna give me a new heart. After they finished what they did within 24 hours, the heart started healing. The doctors were amazed. Yeah, amen. The doctors were amazed. Amen. Two months I was back to work. Amen. Praise God, that's true. That's what birthed the ministry was we doing right now. It was a supernatural move of God. And God spoke to me in the bed and told me, that's God promises to fulfill it. Now, mind you, I had an encounter with, with, with a few doom prophets that came in there and, and said that the judgment of God was on my life. <laughs> I done been through it. But God raised me back up. And I made up my mind that God gave me another chance. I realize I'm here by God's grace. By God's grace. Oh my Jesus, we're almost finished here. Oh, Hallelujah. I'm a miracle. So I might as well believe in him. <laughs> Amen. Lift your hands before the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Oh, I feel the presence of God right now. Hallelujah. We prophesy your blessing over this segment right now. We come against any sickness and disease in here right now. We break the yoke of it now in Jesus' name. We break, oh God, we break the yoke of it now. 
We charge their pains and discomforts break in Jesus' name. And we cover everyone against COVID-19. Anything dormant, we come against that as well. In Jesus. I feel the presence of God even concerning that. In the name of Jesus, we break the yoke of it now. Somebody's lungs, we pray, we touch somebody's lungs right now. In the name of Jesus, we restore somebody's lungs right now. In the name of Jesus, somebody breathe deeply in the name of Jesus. Oh God! In the name of Jesus, we thank, oh my God! Thank, oh God! We thank you, Lord God, for your presence in this place. Hallelujah! We thank you for an overflow of your anointing now, right now. Oh, I feel, oh God, thank you. Thank you, oh, I feel your presence, oh God. Manifest your kingdom through your people, oh God. Manifest your kingdom, oh God. Hallelujah. I feel it breaking in here. I feel some things breaking in here right now. We release courage in here right now. Oh my God, oh God. thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh God. God is moving in the realm of finances in here for somebody. Well, I felt that. I feel God's overflow in here right now. Thank you, Lord God. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Not at all. We declare that right now. In the matchless name of Jesus. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. We're going to say this decree and we're going to turn you loose. Repeat after me. Now, this is going to be activating kingdom authority in you. This is not a pattern. It's not a formula, shall I say. You've got to get in the habit of operating in kingdom authority. All right. Repeat after me. Somebody say we have dominion. We have dominion. Over bullets. Over bullets. Knives. Knives. Guns. Guns. Sticks. Sticks. Bombs. Bombs. Natural disasters. Natural disasters. Hurricanes. Hurricanes. Tornadoes. Tornadoes. Earthquakes. Earthquakes. Tsunamis. Tsunamis. Over accidents of all kinds. Over accidents of all kinds. Over sickness and disease. Over sickness and disease. Over poverty. Over poverty. Over every demonic spirit. Over every demonic spirit. The weather. The weather. Wind. Wind. And sea. And sea. Obey, us. Obey us. We have dominion. We have dominion. Dominion. We are carriers, we are carriers of, the power, of the power, presence, presence anointing, anointing, and the glory of God right now. And the glory of God right now. Our shadow, our shadow carries the glory of God. Carries the glory of God. No weapon, no weapon formed against us, against us shall prosper. Oh, no, that, that, also that also includes lies and backbiters. We are one with heaven. We with heaven. Whatever we bind or loose on earth shall be bound or loose in heaven. We are representatives, we are representatives of, heaven of heaven on the earth. Check this out, y'all. The blind see. The, the deaf hear. The deaf speak. The lame walk. The dead are raised. The lepers are cleansed. The gospel is preached to the poor. Creed of miracles are ours in Jesus' name. Point to yourself and say, We are supernatural. No prison or handcuffs can hold us. The spirit of ISIS in every terrorist group is defeated in Jesus' name. Somebody give God a praise. Woo! Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 All the interest stand before the Lord right now.